<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Third video of the day. What the fuck is going on? Am I right? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this video is coming about for a couple different reasons. The first is this is a video I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And there's probably been a couple times over the last few years where I have attempted to make this video and then it just turned into either a book review or a little book haul or something. Um, but it came up a little while ago. Um, if you remember uh, the drunken book haul I did where I got a bunch of shit that I didn't remember getting. Um, you, you don't shop when you've been drinking, guys. This is just no-brainers. Um, but one of the things that I was trying to do when I did that <clears throat> was get the few books of Bukowski's that I don't have. And um, as this goes on, you'll see kind of um, what I'm talking about. And I'm trying, I think I'm going to have to do this broken up into parts because I don't know how else I'm going to be able to do this and have it make any sense. So. <coughs> Strap yourself in. Um, this is going to be an edited video because I have to put thumbnails and stuff like that in for certain things. And um, also, this is going to be kind of like a checklist of what um, there is out there to get. And also, um, what you should lean towards and lean away from. Um, due to the Martinization of um, posthumous works, if you catch my drift. So anyway, um, uh, I think we have to start with Black Sparrow stuff. And not only do we have to start with Black Sparrow stuff, uh, we should probably do it in some sort of order. We'll do it in some sort of order. Oh, suck it. Something that is a bit tricky for me to do. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I'll do this in release order. Okay? And I don't think I'm going to be clever enough to put, like, numbers and shit at the bottom of the screen. If you're at all interested in this stuff, what you need to do right now is get a pen and paper. Or pull your phone out and open the notepad. Or... Um, I don't know, do a voice memo, or I don't know, you, you know how to fucking take notes. Like, why am I fucking telling you? All right, so we're going to start with his novels, even though he didn't start with his novels. Um, he had other stuff published before then, but I just want to get these out of the way because as much as his novels are probably the least amount of work that he has out there. Um, it seems to me that that's kind of what people go towards first. It's what I went towards first. Um, it's what a lot of people gravitate to because a lot of people don't like poetry because poetry soft or something and complicated. His first novel um, was Post Office, and this is a Black Sparrow Press edition, and I'm really pissed off. There was a spider crawling on my books, and I smashed it with my hand, and so there's a black smear. And I found out how this happens. Um, I threw a book the other day, a different book, and it did this. It bent when it landed. 
So it's either from someone leaning on it or from throwing a book. Who knew that that's how that happens? So this is a pretty um, banged up copy, but I just love this cover. The hardcover... Okay, the one thing I'll say about Black Sparrow Press is they put so much love into the printing of the book. And every Black Sparrow Press book has this, like, inset page. I don't know what the fuck you call it, but it's like just a nice thick page that's a different color than everything else in the book um, and it'll say Black Sparrow Press um, the paper that's used for the covers is so different and to be fair um, Echo has done a really good job trying to recreate all of this but they don't do the um, inset page. I don't know what the hell that's called. If you know, like, write down below. Um, the other thing that's cool about these uh, Black Sparrow editions is that they'll tell you um, other stuff that came out. So, like, his chat books and stuff. So, um... I'm just going to read through some of these, and I'll probably put pictures up if I remember to do it, so hopefully I will. But um, in 1960, uh, Hearse... Yeah, Hearse was a chap... No, not, not a... They did like a zine, like a poetry zine. Um, they put out Flower Fist and Bestial Whale. That was his first book. Um, I don't remember who put out the next one, but long shot poems for broke players. And for some reason, poems is intentionally spelt wrong, and I can't remember what the reason for that was. Um, and then also in 1962, Run with the Hunted. Then um, Lujan Press by um, John Webb um, and Louise Webb. They put out two beautiful editions of his work and um they printed and printed printed them and bound them themselves um and sold them all over the place and those books i think were the ones that gave um bukowski like national probably even further than that recognition before anything else which if you could find like you're gonna have to spend a shit ton of money to get a hold of them but um, it catches my heart in its hands in 1963 and crucifix in a death hand in 1965. Then more chapbooks. We had Cold Dogs in the Courtyard in 65, Confessions of a Man Insane Enough to Live with Beasts in 65, All the Assholes in the World and Mine, 1966, At Terror Street and Agony Way, 1968. Uh, poems written before jumping out of an eight-story window, also in 68. Um, and then we had the um, City Lights stuff coming in. So, Notes of a Dirty Old Man in 69. And then his uh, first book with uh, Black Sparrow. So, it was really cool that Black Sparrow took the time to put um, other stuff in here. And let me see, do they have... No, they don't have all of them. There's a couple other chat books and stuff. And then, like, oh, they have the, the annotated edition of that. Okay. So, um, look at that. So, anyway, so that's, like, a brief history. This is the 32nd printing of this book. And, um... I'm trying to think of when this would have came out. Um... I mean, this came out in 71, is that right? 71, but this edition came out after 95. So, um, 30 second printing, fuck me, dude. Let's all wish we're that good, um, or at least that marketable for fuck's sake. But this book is the first book in the um, Henry Chinaski um, Pentathlon I don't know what you would call that. But um, it's about his work at the post office. Um, he worked at the post office. Um, 
he's even said different years, but anywhere from 10 to 12 years, he worked at the post office. And um, this is kind of about his life during that time. And this is the first book of his I read, and I fucking loved it. Um, there's a couple bits that drag a little bit, but they're still good. It just has a different feel. Like, there's a bit where he goes to Texas where he's not working in the post office. And um, I wish we would have just stayed in the post office world. And then um, there's, like, a whole section of the book that are just, like, the hate mail in corporate speak letters from the post office to him, like chewing them out and stuff. Um, but it's, it's just so good. And it's kind of about, I would say this, if you are middle-aged and you have been thinking about, man, if only life would have been different. If only I would have started writing when I was younger, if only this, if only that, if only this, if only that, and you have some job you've had for a while, um, and you want some really bad advice that might make you happy, but is very scary, read this book, because you'll feel better, or worse than six months. But yeah, so Henry Chinaski, for those of you who don't know, is the like kind of alter ego of Charles Bukowski. It's so he can write nonfiction stuff and then heavily fiction, fictionalize it and have it still be okay. So next we have his second novel. Oh, and if you want to know, in the series, um, even though Post Office was the first one released, that would be book three if you want to read his life chrono uh, chronologically speaking. Okay, and then this is Factotum, his second book. This is about the years um, in between him leaving college and him working at the post office. This is about him bumming across the country, um, being horribly drunk for a very long period of time, um, him trying to write, him giving up writing, and just focusing on drinking. Because um, being a starving writer is one thing, but um, being a starving drunk, that's a lot easier. So um, that's what this guy's about. Um, this is not talked about a lot. Like, this is a good book, okay? Um, but this is usually the one that gets the least amount of love. Um, and this is an Echo Edition the HarperCollins imprint that bought um, Black Sparrow Press like in the early 2000s. Um, Bukowski died in 94, so um, that's that. And um, let's see here. Yeah, so that's this. This is Henry Chinaski bumming across the country. Um, I need to get a Black Sparrow edition of that book. And a few of these other ones. Then the third book, um, probably his most infamous and most famous, Women. This, um, oh, so Factotum would be part book two. And this would be book four. Yes. So this is after he quits the post office and starts becoming an old man poet that for some reason women find attractive all of a sudden. And um, his exploits, um, because he was not a ladies' man before he became a poet. He probably had only been with like three women and maybe a couple hookers. Um, and then this, and then his poetry and his books started coming out, and young women were throwing themselves at him or whatever. So a lot of people um, freak out about this book now because of kind of just how cringy a lot of his womanizing is. But um, the big takeaway from this is, and I'm not giving him fucking any, like, oh, you know, I'm not kid-gloving him here. 
he was a fucking idiot when it came to women. He had no idea how to fucking interact with him. He had no idea how to talk to him. He was terrified of them. He loved looking at them, and he loved the things they would do. But he just couldn't figure out how to be a normal fucking human being around a woman um, until way later in life. So, and I don't even know if he fucking pulled it off then. But again, this is another Echo Edition, but it like Factotum, it has the same um, cover art as the original Black Sparrow Edition. Most of the Echo Editions now um, have awful cover art for these books. Um, okay, so that was that. So the next one would be probably his Opus that everyone bangs on about for good reason. This is Ham on Rye. This is also an Echo Edition. Um, but with the... Uh, this one took me a long fucking time to find, guys, because most of the editions of this book are the new, newer Echo Editions with the... For some reason, they have Post Office Women and Ham on Rye. And if you put the three together, they make, like, a neon sign... Which is cool, but, like, when you don't include all the books in that, like, like why is Factotum not a part of that? That's fucking stupid. And there is, um, in yellow right there, that's Bukowski's touched-up high school picture. So look, look at the guy next to him. He's, like, you know, like a normal high school kid, looks about 17, whatever. Look at Bukowski. He looks like a fucking old man. Like, he looks like he's one of the teachers unbelievable um but yeah so like like i was saying with these like they don't have the inset pages um but also uh this book is from his first memory until um the end of his college days this is a coming of age story it's really touching and moving and the whole thing and um strange and a lot of fun um i was talking with somebody recently about how they this book made them think of him as like a total piece of shit and i don't understand how that works um because if anything i think this book makes you feel very sorry for him and like wanting to like be there for him and this would be book one obviously since it's his first memory um and then we go to the final chinaski book hollywood and this is when he finally leaves the la apartment life gets a house in san pedro um gets a nice car instead of broken down vws and um, they're making a movie out of they want um, some producers come to him to make a movie, and this is about the making of the movie and his life during that time, um, and it's kind of like a good ending to a wild and crazy life, um, and it's sad when it's all over because you just read five fucking books following this guy's life and that's it. And then the last novel, <clears throat> this is a Black Sparrow Press edition. Um, and if you could see it, I don't know if you'd be able to tell. Oh, yeah, look at that. The um, ridges in the paper oh, it just feels so good, dude. The colors are great. Um, John Martin's wife, and there we go with the little inset page. Um, John Martin's wife was the one who did all the artwork. And... Um, Especially on the back covers, these, like, really simple, but, like, this, like, Charles Bukowski, a novel that's, like, a bullet and the gun, um, and this is such a fucking fun book, especially for me, um, this book came out, this is the last thing he wrote, um, or the last novel he wrote, obviously, but it came out right after he died, um, and this is the... You gonna tell me what printing this is? Are you serious? There's no hmm. There's no printing information. Hmm. But it's dedicated to bad writing, 
And um, Chinaski is mentioned in this, but this is a book about, um, like, if you like old pulp stories, um, old detective shit, um, this is just like a parody of it. And um, it's fucking hysterical. I love it. Um, I have the audiobook of this. One of the most fun things to do is listen to this on two speed. And um, it goes by like that. But it's so much fun because it sounds like a fucking, like, like a Marx Brothers routine or like a, a Laurel and Hardy sketch or something. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, hey, hey, whoa, it's just so much fun. So anyway, so those are um, the novels, okay? Um, and some of you are looking at your watch going, Jesus fucking Christ, how long is this video going to fucking be long? So strap in. <clears throat> and I think we'll talk about Barfly next because um, this is the real movie starring Mickey Rourke and, um, oh my God, how come I can't remember her name? Faye Dunaway. Um, that uh, the book Hollywood is about. Um, so this is just the screenplay. It's not a novelization. It's just the actual screenplay. Um, it's not great, but look at this. We got a, a yellow page in the middle. Um, this is probably the worst cover of anything they did, but they just needed to put Mickey Rourke and Faye Dunaway on the cover to sell some paper. So that's cool. So, um, yeah, this is, again, a Black Sparrow. Do I know the edition of this? 1993, fifth printing. Um, directed by Barbe Schroeder. Alright, so alright, boom, Barfly. Oh, and the movie Barfly is about um, kind of his life with Jane, who was like his first love, who was like 10 years older than him, who was a really bad alcoholic, um, probably more so than he ever was, and um, her and him and all of his time in Philadelphia, um, which you'll read about in Factotum, and um, kind of just the stuff that he had glossed over but hadn't really gone into detail about. And it is what it is. The movie's not amazing, um, but what you're going to do when they come for you, bad boys. All right, so now we're going into short stories. Um, South and No North. Um, this is a really good book. Um, let me see here. Uh, this came out in 1973. Um, and this is just like a lot of his um, stories of the buried life. A lot of the stuff um, that... Like, uh, short stories that were in, um, a bunch of Mimeo mags and zines and, um, some of his chat books. Yeah, this has all the assholes in the world in mind and confessions of a man insane enough to live with beasts. So, um, that's cool. And this also has, um, this is what killed Dylan Thomas, which is what the, uh, Taylor Hackford, um, Bukowski documentary of him going up to San Francisco and reading at City Lights um, is about. So, yeah, this is, if you like short stories, this is great. Um, and then the last, and that's an Echo Edition, even though it has the um, original cover. Um, Hot Water Music is probably my favorite short story collection of his. Um, oh, that's such a good story. Um, and this came out in 83, 83, yeah. Um, and this Echo Edition, oh, this is the first Echo Edition. Okay, so this, um, came out in 02 when they printed it. But they kept the, um, man, they were really going hard with the, um, aesthetics of Black Sparrow and um, these are just gorgeous books I fucking love them now the hardback versions of all these books on the binding I hate them I don't know why they do this but they have like a 
I don't know what you would call it, like a reinforcement tape crap on it. And the one for post office looks cool because it has like stars and stripes on it because it's all the government post office. Um, but the rest of them, and that one I don't even like, but um, they did that on all the hardcover editions and eh, I don't like hardcovers anyway. So there is that. Um, now, everything else in the Echo or Black Sparrow catalog um, that had short stories in it were also um, mixed with poetry. So, um, we'll probably move into the poetry. Nope, nope, we're not going to do that yet because I just saw these right here. So we're going to hit these up first. Um, and this one, no, I can't remember which one of these came out first. I think this one did. So this is Bring Me Your Love by Charles Bukowski with illustrations by R. Crumb. These are really thin, short stories um, illustrated by R. Crumb, and the illustrations are fucking amazing. I love them so much. Um, this is my favorite picture in the whole thing. That's so funny. Um, and this story's great on top of it. Um, I can't really, I guess I can for a minute, show you some of that. Um, and show you some of that real quick. Um, but yeah, so these are great. This one's so funny. Um, and then this one, there's no business. This one's just kind of sad. I'm not going to lie, folks. Um, but yeah, these are also Echo Editions because I'm going to guess that the Black Sparrow editions of these are really hard to get your hands on. So, and here's some R-Crumb stuff for you there and there. And this one's about a uh, washed up uh, comedian. Um, it's pretty funny, but it's kind of depressing. <laughs> so there's that. And then... Um, the last book before we get into the poetry and the letters is going to be Shakespeare Never Did This. And I think this is the... And that's him and Linda Lee on the back there. I think... Oh, and this is a Black Sparrow Press edition, so we have that. Um, yeah, this is the augmented edition, because this originally came out... Is it not going to say? Why would they do that? Whatever. So, this is about um, Bukowski going to um, Germany and France. And, um, uh, doing all that stuff. And he would, like, write, like, little travel blogs. Blogs, listen to me talk. Um, but all the photography in here is from Michael Munford. So, you have these great big pictures. Um,. You know, it's it's a lot of... Oh, that's some good stuff. That's such a cute picture. You know, you always want kids to light your cigarettes for you. Um, but yeah, just him bumming around and traveling and seeing the sights, doing readings, um, uh, being on TV, signing people's t-shirts, you know, um, just stuff like that. It's super interesting. This is a really famous picture. And they usually put someone in this chair, like when you see this picture online. Like, I've seen it with Paris Hilton. I think I've seen it with Britney Spears. I don't know why. Um, but that was a thing for a while. Um, so yeah, and then there's some poetry in here. Um, it's just, it's a really nice, fun book. So, um, I don't know if Echo's put this out. I'm sure they have. I don't know why they wouldn't have. Um, but yeah, so that's a really fun book to pick up if you're deep in the weeds, yo. Um, let's see. So now we are going to get into the poetry. So most of these are all Echo editions. So the first one I have here is The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. This was his first uh, poetry book that John Martin put out. Now, and the, he, um, what do you call it, uh, 
dedicated this to Jane. Um, there's a lot of Jane stuff in here. Um, this is really good. Now, um, do I do this now? I'll do this now, just to get it out of the way. <sighs> um, okay, let's just do the whole fucking thing. Alright, sorry guys. This is, this is where, um, it's hard to talk about any of this without, um, talking about the elephant in the room and then the little baby elephants in the room. So the elephant in the room is John Martin. Now, John Martin, um, some people say without John Martin, no one would know who Bukowski is. Blah, 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 blah. There might be a little bit to that. <clears throat> um, but he also might have hindered his career more than helping it. And the only reason why I say that is because he had already been putting out books with City Lights. Um, and we're going to get to the City Lights books in a little bit. Um, but he had already been putting out books with City Lights, and I'll show you the books that had already come out. And he was already selling out poetry readings. Um, he was already, like, um, writing for Open City and the LA Free Press. Like, all this shit was happening already. So, <clears throat> for those people who think, like, if John Martin hadn't given Hank that, um... the hundred dollars a month or 20% of his earnings, like whatever story you want to believe at that moment, um, that he never would have been able to do anything. I don't know if that's true. Um, and there were a lot of times when big publishers, like in the late seventies, mid to late seventies and early eighties were hitting him up saying, come here, we are going to give you whatever you want, which probably more likely than not was a lie. So he was probably better off staying where he was at that point. But, um, John Martin made a shit ton of money on him, and John Martin did really love Bukowski's stuff, and, you know, thought of him as the modern-day Walt Whitman and all this other stuff, um, but at the same time, like, Bukowski being as successful as Bukowski was, um, made it to where he could also quit his day job and put out poets that he didn't have any um, morality issues with, if that makes sense. Like, it, it's like Bukowski was the necessary evil <clears throat> in order for John Martin to get Black Sparrow Press up and running, and to keep it running, and to keep it running good. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, when we get to his books of letters... Um, there are letters back and forth, um, or at least letters that Bukowski wrote to John, um, where he was really pissed off about, uh, money that was owed to him, when books were going to come out, um, heavy edit jobs in, um, the book women. And we're going to talk about the heavy editing jobs later too, but in the book women, um, John did a really heavy edit to it. And that was the first printing of the book. And when Bukowski read it, he completely lost his shit. And he's like, every other printing of this book has to be my original that I gave you. This is bullshit. Like, we're going to have, like, huge problems if we can't rectify this. <clears throat> and for those of you who don't know, um, John Martin is a Scientologist, or at least he was when all this was going on. And he didn't drink. And um, he also didn't womanize. And he um, was just a straight-laced dude. And for those people who say that, like, Bukowski only did what he did and got where he wanted to get because his friend was publishing his books, it wasn't easy like that. It was a fucking nightmare in the editing process because John kept wanting to edit stuff. John wanted Bukowski to put like a glossary in the back of post office explaining what all the post office terms were. And Bukowski's like, like, no, I'm not going to do that. And that was a big fight. And, um, until John finally backed down on that. 
So, um, I forgot why I was talking about that. <clears throat> oh, yes. So, the idea of which poetry books by Bukowski you should get. Um, I am going to put up a picture, like right here or over there or something, of a poem that Bukowski wrote that um, was published in a magazine before his death. <clears throat> and John Martin had nothing to do with it. And then the same poem published by John Martin after Bukowski's death. And if you look, the green lines are the words that John Martin took out of the poem. The red lines are the words that John Martin added into the poem. So green is taken out, red is added. Or is that vice versa? Shit, I might have just fucked all you guys up. Um, red is taken out, green is added. I don't know. Bukowski's is on the left side and John Martin's is on the right side. I'm trying to visualize the picture in my head. Um, so this gives you an idea of what um, was really happening because like editing is one thing, changing a word or two is one thing, but completely adding lines and taking things out. These are rewrites. So every poetry book that Bukowski wrote um, before he died, generally speaking, are probably pretty close to accurate, and we will get deeper into that in just a little bit. The poetry books that came out after his death that are edited by John Martin will have many poems in it that are reworked, and the main things that are taken out are the drinking, the fucking, the gambling, um, like, the things will still be, like, mentioned in passing, but, um, different words will be used to describe it. Some of the cursing is taken out. Just shit like that. You'll see. I mean, I just put the thing up. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. So I was gonna, um, oh, we just did the days run away like wild horses over the hills. But I also want to show you this one. This came out in 86, 88. And this is a Black Sparrow edition with a blue inset page. Um, and just so you know, the original Shakespeare Never Did This came out in 79. Boom. So this edition came out before third printing. Okay, so this is probably the oldest Black Sparrow I have, probably. So the Rooming House Madrigals. Now these are early poems from 46 to 66. This is stuff that he submitted to um, places and mainly were rejected. And um, also, Bukowski has a little introduction there. Does this have all the Kesseltown shit and all that stuff in it? I can't remember if it does. I don't think it does. But anyway, so this is the stuff he wrote when he was trying to be a poet and was kind of giving up on poetry. And when you're reading this, you could see why... Um, not you could. It's not that you could see why, because he could do it, and he was doing it well. Um, but it was a lot more lyrical. It was a lot more... Um, not a lot more form-based, but um, I would say probably more academic than um, what he put out in later years. And you could see over the decades, how his work changed. He went from uh, doing things very by the book and kind of stepping out of the lines to once we get to the 70s, kind of not starting his own version of poetry, but um, really still deep, but really breaking out, and then by the time the 80s rolled around, he was just like, I'm going to just fucking write whatever the fuck I want and not give two shits about it. So this is a good look at his early stuff. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's still really good. Um, so there's that. We'll put that there. And then this was his actual first published book there. And then his second one 
And who did he dedicate this to? I'm just reading about this. Linda King for all the good reasons. I think he had to change that because, um, according to Linda King, they had broken up and then got back together. And um, the original introduction, I think, was still to her, but it was, like, really scathing, according to her book that I was reading. So, this one is still, like, look, like, it's, oh, shit, it's, like, all over the place, um, you know, this is, like, 1972, 72, so it's just very, um, coming out of acad academia, he was never in academia, but you know what I'm saying, and him trying to find his style and his voice. And these are still really good. Um, most people who like his poetry, who um, don't like the hardcore fucking and all that stuff, really like this book and The Days Run Away. Um, but there's that. Then we have um, Burning and Water, Drowning in Flame. This cover is so simple. And it's, like, one of my favorites. I love the, like, royal blue on bright orange with, like, the hot pink, like, bars. Like, it's just like, what the fuck is this? But this book is really cool because it is, um, let me see here. It's Terror Street and Agony Way. Um, it catches my heart in its hands and crucifix and death hand. I don't think it's fully all those books, though. Which is kind of sad. I need to look into that. I've always wanted to check and I never do it. And then um, Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame are poems from 72 to 73. So you have three books that were out of print at that time. And um, then some new stuff. So this is really cool. Um, the early stuff is like the it catches its heart in its hands and crucifix in the death hand some of that stuff to me is a bit opaque for Bukowski um but it's it's really good don't get me wrong I'm just saying like depending on what you're used to when you read his stuff it's uh kind of heavy um in how it's written um so yeah, so that's really cool. I like that. And then, fi not finally, but then we get into 76, 77, um, with Love is a Dog from Hell. And um, there is a You Kiss Lily um, by itself. I've never seen that. Um, that story is fucking hysterical. I love it. Um, that's in Hot Water Music. But there was a um, by itself edition, kind of like the um, Bring Me Your Love and There's No Business, but I don't think it was illustrated. <sighs> but anyway, so this is a classic. Um, everyone knows this one. Um, it has the chapbook Scarlet in it um, about cupcakes, who I read that book the other and showed it to you, whatever. Then, dangling... Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I forgot this because it's so little. Look at this cover. I love that cover. Even though it's, like, almost fucking impossible to read. Play the piano drunk like a percussion instrument until the fingers begin to bleed a bit. By Charles Bukowski. Um, this is 1979. A really slim volume of poetry. Um, just brilliant. This is, this is really good. Um, and then, dangling in the... Tornafortia. It's some Californian tree. It talks about it in there. Um, the thing about this book, I am going to say it, this is the worst feeling cover of any Echo or Black Sparrow Press um, Bukowski book. It feels disgusting. I hate touching it, which makes me hate reading it, which is too bad because I kind of like this book a lot. There's a lot of good shit in here, and this is from 81. This is a really good one. I like it a lot. Um, it's kind of one that 
you don't really find in bookstores that often for some reason. I don't know why, but um, I had to order this one special, um, if I recall. But, yeah, I had to order that one. Okay, so from there, we go to um, War All the Time. Now, War All the Time, for the most part, is one of my favorite poetry books of his. But it has the chapbook Horse Meat in it. <clears throat> Horse Meat is a... Let me see, does it talk about it here? No. Okay, Horse Meat. Let me see if the table of contents will get into it for me here. Nope, of course not. Why would it? Um, probably not going to be able to just flip to it. But it's basically this really, really long poem broken up into like 10 or 12 chapters that is just about horse racing and gambling. And um, I love hearing about the racetrack and the people he meets at the racetrack and the feeling and the emotion and the despair and the depravity of the racetrack. I love all that. But when he starts talking about like a, a six to one shot and a five to two one and a nine to two and a bird, 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 like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't care. Like, I, it, it's confusing. I don't understand it. Um, maybe if I got hardcore into gambling just so I could understand some of that stuff, that would be cool. But when I talk about, and this is one of those things where it's like, I don't worship Bukowski as much as some of you might think I do. Um, because one of my rules is that you don't make things hard for people. Like you don't, like everything should be simple. And he even says like, you know, I don't, I don't want to quote him and misquote him, but like, just like, keep it simple. And when you're talking about shit that a very small fraction of people know about, and you go into deep minutia of how that works and you're not even explaining how it works. You're just talking about it. Um, <clears throat> it kind it's very off putting first off. Um, and second, it's like, for those of you who I've talked to who said you like to, like, do your research, like, when you're reading poetry, like, you want to be able to pick up a dictionary, you want to go search for stuff, you know, um, then th these poems would probably be amazing. You'd probably love them. But um, it's, it's just, it's not accessible to everyone. And I believe that was a conscious effort on his part to make himself stand out. And that's fine. If that's why he did it, whatever. I don't care. I don't like it. Um, and the other thing he does um, a lot, especially as the poems go later, um, he relies heavily on his extensive knowledge of classical music to... Um, Kind of, and I almost feel like he does it to show you that he's not just an uncouth, drunk fucker. You know, like, I'm cultured, bitch. I, I, I fucking listened to Vivaldi. What are you going to do about it? I don't think he listened to Vivaldi. Um, I don't think that was one of his favorites. But Wagner and Bach, he's into all that stuff. So, and that's fine. But... The difference between him talking about classical music and him talking about betting on horses is that the classical music, people could read it, understand, oh, he's talking about classical music, and that be it. And then when he's talking about um, the horse races, it's like, stop. Like, stop it. Like, make that stop. So that's funny. Then probably right now, one of my favorite poetry books of his is um, You Get So Alone at Times It Just Makes Sense. I read this, I buddy read this with uh, Brandy the Booklectic in March, I think. Um, and it's just really good. Um, there are parts early on, I think, where it's a little less good 
but it's still really good. This is a great one. Um, and I think that size should be like this width. Like you, you should stop at this width, like with these books. I don't know what the fuck John Martin was thinking as he went on. But, um, and then another one of the Opus poetry books that everybody loves is The Last Night of the Earth Poems. This is really good, as you can see. I've flagged the hell out of this. It's really good. It's really deep. It's really emotional. But again, there is like, if you look, okay, you can see a big chunk right here where I'm not putting flags in. Why do you think that is? You know? Um, so, it's just, there. there's, and a lot of the stuff he writes when they get put into these big books, especially when he was alive, um, they were put together in sequence almost of when he was writing the stuff. So it's almost like in chronological order of when they were turned in. Did John Martin use all of the stuff? No, as you will soon see. So this is a fucking chunker, and it's good. Okay? Now, the last book of poetry he wrote, I believe, let me just make sure of this. It's not going to tell me in here, is it? Oh, yeah, well, okay. Uh... No, Last Night of the Earth Poems was his last poetry book during his lifetime. This came out before that, so I fucked up the order here. <sighs> Sepetujeri... I always fuck that up. Sepetuj... Oh. Stew. Now, the reason why you're going to go, oh, I've heard of that word, it's because they were using that word a lot in the news during the election because both of the uh, candidates were in their 70s. And this is just um, kind of a present to himself for his 70th birthday. Because um, I don't think he thought he was going to live past 10. Um, so this is stories and poems. The poems in here are good. The stories in here are okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like a story in here that I like was like blown away by. I don't think there was um so yeah this is 1990 and the last time of the earth poems came out in 92 so <clears throat> you know whatever and then but just like that simple design on the back is so good um but i'm actually going to start reading this again here pretty soon because i've only read this once i think so um i'm going to give this one another go here really soon so now so now, Charles Bukowski has traveled to the other side. Okay, so this is obviously a video you watch in parts. Maybe I'll play around with timestamps here. Okay, so the first chunker that um, came out after Bukowski's death was Betting on the Muse, Poems and Stories. This is a Black Sparrow Press edition with the nice pages. This came out in 96, okay? Look at how much stuff, okay? This right here is stuff that Bukowski wrote that John Martin didn't think was good enough to be published when Bukowski was alive, okay? So to paint this picture a little bit brighter... This is all of the posthumous stuff that Bukowski wrote, or that was published. And this isn't all of it. This is just the stuff that John Martin had. Okay? So that's a fucking ton of shit, right? Okay. Now, remember the little picture we talked about earlier, okay? So this book, um, it's okay. It's not great. It's okay. Um, it's not my favorite collection of his stuff from after his death. It's kind of chunky. Um, it's got short stories in it too, but oh, God damn it. Look at that cover. I love, I don't like the photo cover, but I love that texture. 
I don't know what, if you, if any of you know what that texture is called, please tell me it because I need to order like reams of that. Um, I don't even care what I use it for. I just want to have that. Um, this one is probably my favorite and I thought it meant something dirty, but it kind of doesn't. Um, but Bone Palace Ballet, just beautiful. This is a Black Sparrow Press Edition with the little inset. This came out in um, 1997. Okay. Um, this I just really enjoyed. I remember reading this. I'm trying to remember what was the last one. Oh, that one. Okay. Um, I was just reading this thinking, oh my God, this is so nice. It's so nice to be sitting with my old buddy. And um, we got that rigid paper. Um, but I hadn't found a new Bukowski poetry book that I hadn't read in a long time. And um, I got this when we were living in the desert, actually. And... Um, that was just so refreshing. <sighs> then we have this guy. The captain is out to lunch and the sailors have taken over their ship. Illustrated by Robert Crumb. Or R. Crumb. Robert Crumb. This is kind of um, some great stuff in here. This is fucking depressing. This is like him journaling about his life. So this probably shouldn't have been in the, but I love that picture. Um, I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have put this in this bit, but, um, it's kind of close to like what's going on, but this was like, um, so February 21st, 1993. Is that the last? No, February 27th. Yeah, February 27th was the last um, journal entry he made. And um, this is basically journaling about... Um, he lived another year after the journaling subsided. But um, it's kind of... Uh, just him knowing that his time's up. And um, trying to still do normal things, but knowing that... I don't know. It's just, it's kind of sad. It like tugs on your heartstrings there. And again, that's an echo edition and, um, came out like the way the black sparrow did. Um, I actually have, I need to check, but I have one of the books I got on that, um, drunk ordering is the on the bus, uh, volume 25 or volume three. I can't remember. But it has a bunch of the sections from that in it. Um, before John got a hold of all of them. So I need to cross-reference and see if there were changes made in that as well. Um, this is the last new Bukowski poetry book I had read. And this cover is beat to fuck. But it's a Black Sparrow Press edition. Um got the pages this came out in 99 and this was okay and if you notice all my tags are like kind of in the same area of the book this is a fat fucking book it looked like it was going to pull apart as I was reading it and I think this is the last book this size um, betting on the muse and this one are just too big for paperback like I don't know, or at least this size of a paperback. I don't fucking know. It just wasn't nice. I, I, the book itself is okay, but like I, I, that's too big. Um, then we have Open All Night, new poems. Um, there are a lot of poems in here, and I need to go through all these since I've been doing flags and stuff. So beautiful cover, nice little eyeball moon thing. Ugh, this feels just like dangling. 
Um, the Night Torn Mad with Footsteps. I remember liking this book a lot more than I thought I would. But again, a lot of these poems have been edited heavily. Um, Sifting Through the Madness for the Word, the Line, and the Way. Still good. Look at, look at Echo trying to fucking make the back of his book look like a normal person's book. Don't like that. Ah, uh, all right. What do we got next? This one is just flashy looking. Uh, the Flash of Lightning Behind the Mountain, new poems. Look at that. Fucking it up, man. Um, slouching Toward Nirvana. All of these are good, but they're not great. So, and I don't know if it's just like a mental block in my head, like knowing that these things have been um, heavily edited. Um, come on in. Don't like the artwork on this at all. I don't like it. I don't like that. Um, and then we kind of went back to old school um, looking Echo stuff with, uh, or Black Sparrow stuff with, uh, the people look like flowers at last. And honestly, the thing between slouching toward Nirvana and the people look like flowers at last and come on in, like those three books, it's like Bukowski would never say that. Bukowski never wants people to come in. Bukowski, Bukowski doesn't like, believe in, you know, the other side and all this other shit. I don't know. Maybe he did at the end and just didn't really talk about it a whole lot. Um, and then there's this guy. This this was the last um, John Martin Echo Edition. Um, oh, this was someone's school book. They have notes written in it. Edited by John Martin. So, um, I think this is... No, there's one more after this. It's just like a collection. But um, it has a bunch of his drawings on the front, so I just am drawn to it. But there are a lot of poems in this slim volume of poetry that have been Martinized like crazy. Um, so there's that. Okay, so now... If you are like, okay, I understand now. Um, just try to get books from before he died, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. Now, um, there was at least one more book and I got it and I gave it to Zoe cause it was a hardcover and I just already had it. But, um, the, uh, the pleasure of the damned edited by John Martin, the pleasures of the damned 2007. And then I guess this came out afterwards. The Pleasure of the Damned, Pleasures of the Damned, um, that has a lot of early poems in it too, um, through 93. And I told this to Zoe, and I haven't checked it to see if it's um, legit or not. But because a lot of those poems, it's kind of like a greatest hits kind of thing. And since a lot of those poems were already known and um, had been in other stuff, there's a good possibility that The Pleasures of the Damned is okay. I haven't checked it, so don't um, quote me on it. But considering when the poems are taken from, and they're not new poems, I don't think. I think it's a best of. Um that should be pretty solid. Now, um, John Martin is still alive as of this recording, I believe. But um, somebody else came up to kind of take on the editing of Bukowski stuff for Echo. And that is this dude named Abel D D Burrito, I believe his name is. Um, but the books that he... And look at this. If you guys remember... I got all these like cool Echo versions, and then I got this Harper Lux large print, stupid glossy cover, goddamn book. So we have um, On Writing, great book. On Cats, if you like cats, 
If you don't, you might find that hard to swallow. On Love with the little Bukowski 100 sticker. Oh, and I got to tell you about that, too. That's an update. Um, and Bukowski on Drinking. So those books are books that um, he edited and went back to original manuscripts. And so a lot of the stuff, if it was put out in any of the books that John Martin um, edited, the versions of them in here are the original versions of those. And a great collection of poetry um, is Storm for the Living and the Dead, the um, uncollected and unpublished poems. And this is got a cool cover, and it is um, raw and fun and the whole deal. Now, there is one other book that I don't fucking have because I bought a bunch of dumb shit when I was... But it's just called The Essential Charles Bukowski. It's green, in America at least. Um, and that is like uh, The Essential of Bukowski, according to this um, able dude, who has been doing a great job. And um, I hope he continues to kind of fix some of the muddy shit that happened. Now, if you recall, I have talked a little bit about Bukowski 100. It was going to be a book and an audio book of poetry. And um, there really isn't much audio of Bukowski's poetry unless it's from poetry readings or really early recordings he was doing. So someone like um, Christian Baskus or um, Will Patton or somebody like that doing um, Bukowski's uh, poetry for Audible would be fan-fucking-tabulous. And so um, there was a book coming out, and I pre-ordered it, and then the book never fucking came out, and I was all pissed off. And I didn't know what was going on, didn't know who to talk to. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking ask the horse. So I went to Harper Collins, who owns Echo, who owns Black Sparrow Press. And I said, hey, this book was supposed to come out. What the fuck happened to it? Oh, it got canceled. And I'm like, oh, how come? Uh, we think it's due to COVID. Oh, are you, uh, is there any plans of putting it back together? No. So that fucking sucks. And I'm really fucking bummed out. And there's a lot of me that thinks that maybe he's a little too controversial in these times, or especially last summer, to be able to um, put his stuff out. I think that probably had more to do with it than COVID, but I don't know. It depends on who they were getting to come read and getting studio time and all that other shit. But if they were putting out other audiobooks over that period, um, they're full of shit because they blamed it on COVID. So, um, if you find Abel editing a book, pick it up. It's probably really good. Now, uh, let's move in. Nope, you know what we're going to do first? We're going to go into how I figured out all of this shit about John Martin. Okay? I got three books here called Bukowski Manuscripts got these on Lulu, and I think they're put together by the guy who runs the Bukowski.net forums. But basically, what this is, they went out and found all of the original, um, either original manuscripts, or, and this one came out in 2011, and so it was kind of around that time. The original manuscripts or original printings and magazines before John Martin got his hands on stuff. And then they started putting stuff together like that picture I showed you earlier. These books are super cheap on Lulu.com. Just type in um, Bukowski Manuscripts or Bukowski Back, at the, Back to the Machine Gun. Um, so this is Manuscripts Volume 1, 59 through 74. And then we have Volume 2, 75 through 77, and Volume 3, 78 to 80. And this Volume 3 came out in December 2014. So um, there hasn't been anything new uh, out of this that I've found. I haven't really checked, but I thought I would, would have heard. 
But so these are really cool to have because you're reading the exact thing and they're fucking dirt cheap for brand new books. I think they were like like six or seven bucks a piece. Um, so if you are interested and curious and all the stuff that's in here, I believe are poems and stories that have been fucked with. And so that's the unfucking of those stories. I'm not 100% on that, but um, yeah. So before we move into City Lights, I want to go over the letters. So um, the first one, and this one, I think this is fucking boring. Listening to Sherry Martinelli fucking talk is like, Nails on a goddamn chalkboard. But this is a Black Sparrow edition, uh, Beer Spit Night and Cursing, the correspondence between Charles Bukowski and Sherry Martinelli from 1960 to 1967. Um, she was supposedly um, an ex-lover of Ezra Pound and I think would visit him and take care of him when he was in the asylum or whatever. Um, and then she had, I think, some magazine that Bukowski was, um, I don't know, they were talking for a very long time, and, um, when you read his letters, it's almost like he's writing to his audience, and it doesn't even sound like him, but from other letters that you'll read of his, and so then there's that part, because this came out in 2009, I guess, or not 2009, um, shit. 2001. So this might have been the last Black Sparrow book published. Um, but I don't know how much of this was John Martinized or what, but like you're reading it and you're like, dude, that doesn't sound any fucking thing like him at all. Like, why is he saying that? He doesn't fucking think that. Um, so it's just, it's kind of mm, frustrating. Now, um, okay, let me get these out of the way before I hurt myself. Oh, these, um, I got these ones. These are the four volumes of Bukowski letters put out by Virgin for the UK market. I don't know why I collected these ones. I think it's because there were more of them than the Echo Editions. Or the Black Sparrow editions, which I'll put up here. It's like uh, Living on Luck, Screams from the Balcony, and Reaching for the Sun, I think. Um, and those books are like the 60s to the 70s, the 70s to the 80s, and then like 1970 to 1994. Like it's it's a real like odd smorgasbord of how I probably said that word wrong. But these books are great. Um, it's his correspondence with like everybody, um, other poets, um, Henry Miller, um, John Martin, uh, just so many people who saved his letters and um, gave them to this guy who was editing this. And I can't remember the dude's name. It's like Shoe something or Seamus Cooney. Um, but those books from Echo, I think, are edited by the same guy, but I don't understand why there's four volumes of these and three volumes of those, and the years are different. Because this first one is um, 58 to 65, 65 to 70, 71 to 86, and 87 to 94. So um, I need to get those ones just to see what the difference is and if there's any extra letters in there or not. Now, we haven't even talked about the different versions of these books that are out there. The um, Abel um, De Brito, I hope I'm saying his name right, books, um, the editions from Spain are fucking gorgeous. They're like black with like little light white pencil drawings on them. Um, there's some cool editions from Italy, like just great covers and some of the German books. Like I can't remember what book it was. Oh, I think it's what we're going to be talking about next. Okay. So we'll come back to that. Um, so we got those 
and we got these. So if you remember earlier, I said um, Bukowski had already had books out before John Martin came around. And um, these are those books. So this book here, Notes of a Dirty Old Man, I don't like this cover. I want the cover that matches all the other covers that I have in my collection, like this one. But the problem is, <coughs> okay, let me just tell you what the problem is real quick. More notes of a dirty old man, the uncollected columns. They never have done a different edition of this to make this match the other books. But this one they have done another edition of to make it match the other books. City Lights, match this fucking book. Come on. So anyway, Notes of a Dirty Old Man. These, this is um, the columns that he wrote for um, Open City and the LA Free Press. Um, this came out, I don't think this is going to tell me. This isn't as um, thorough. No, it's not going to tell me. Okay, so this is like before post office and before um, the days run away like horses over the hills. Um, but this is when he was writing just some crazy ass shit to like get people's attention. Okay. So notes of a dirty old man. And more notes of a dirty old man, the uncollected columns. Now, a lot of these columns, I think, also were the short stories that he was sending to, um, like, the porno mags. Because they were paying him pretty good to write dirty fucking stories. And so what he would do is just take one of his stories and then write a few lines of some, like, hardcore sex in it. Just so he could keep writing the stories. It's a very much... Um, not very much, but it reminds me of Kilgore Trout from Breakfast of Champions. He was, like, writing these stories, these science fiction stories that had nothing to do with sex, but, like, the publishers were putting, like, dirty pictures in and using his stories as just fluff to, like, fill out the pages for these dirty pictures. Now, the book that, um, like, his first big collection of short stories was... Um, Erections, Ejaculations, and General Tales of Ordinary Madness that City Lights put out. Um, that kind of made him big. Um, between the Notes of a Dirty Old Man and that book, like, the whole underground, every college knew who Bukowski was. So, that version of the book isn't available anymore, obviously, because it says ejaculations and erections on the cover. But it's been, um, City Lights has broken it up into two books. So you have Tales of Ordinary Madness and The Most Beautiful Woman in Town. These are really good stories, but a lot of them are very raunch and very, not even cringy, just like hard to fucking read. There's one, I can't remember what it's called. Um, maybe it's in this one. It's got to be in this one, because it wasn't in the other two books I looked at. The Fiend, I think is what it is. Yeah, there's a story in here called The Fiend that is um, too much. This book, other than that story, is fucking amazing. I love it. And I love this one, too. Um... But the story, The Fiend, um, those of you who are, um, like, he was interviewed about why he wrote it, and he just said it was like, um, he wrote it because he could, and he knew it would, like, piss a lot of people off and, like, make people freak out, and it fucking did. And, um... That is just, like, one of those stories. It's, um, I don't know if it would be molestation or rape, but it's something along those lines. Um, so it's just, it's really hard to read. The way it's done is very much like the end of, um, The Dunwich Horror. So... Um, if you know what I mean by that, you will know what I mean. Okay, we'll come back to these two, because I think these were published after these. Now, these, again, when you're picking up a City Lights book, you don't have to worry about John Martin, okay? Um, City Lights 
was usually really good about letting Bukowski do whatever the fuck he wanted. So, um, yeah. So if it says City Lights and it has that little weird, like, yay, kind of guy on it, you're safe. Um, so this one is, okay, so this one. Um, portions from a Weinstein notebook. Uncollected stories and essays from 1944 to 1990. Awesome. Um, and then this one, Absence of a Hero. Uh, uncollected stories and essays, volume two. From 1946 to 1992. Awesome. These books are great. Um, I don't think most people think of Bukowski as an essayist, if that's what they're called. Um, now, I showed you On Writing, which is an amazing book. Um, get it. Then we have these two books. Um, this is The Mathematics of the Breath and the Way. On Writers and Writing by Charles Bukowski. This is a great book, and dude, guess what? It feels so good in your hand. You could just squeeze it and break it. Same with this motherfucker. The bell tolls for no one. Who's that making fun of, huh? Who Who's he talking to there, huh? Yeah, you know who he's talking to. So these are like stories, essays, um, sometimes even letters. Um... Oh, his manifesto, um, interviews. This one has interviews in it, which is awesome. Um, also, his introductions he wrote for other books and his literary criticism he wrote for books. Um, or not for books, but for magazines talking about other people's books. Um, so th this, this book's amazing. I love it. It's so cool. And this one... Um, Come on, introduction. Get the fuck out of here. You're not going to tell me what's in you? I don't think you're going to tell me what's in you. Nope. So this is just basically stories, and a lot of these stories are the stories from the um, dirty magazines and stuff like that. So um, there's that. Now, am I done? Is that all of the Bukowski that I have? I think it is. Is it? I think it is. So basically, that's the deal. Um, just make sure you're reading poetry from before he died, if you're reading anything from Black Sparrow or Echo. Um, or read anything edited by Abel D. Brito. Um, then you're fine. Get those Bukowski manuscript books on lulu.com. Um Anything from City Lights is good, and if you know the answer to the letter story between the Virgin Books, the four Virgin Books issues, and the three Echo issues, I would love to know. And if anyone has a copy of Notes of a Dirty Old Man with the cover that I want on it, mail it to me. Just fucking mail it to me. Um, and I think that's it. And um, if you want to bug Harper Collins and say fucking put that fucking book out you bastards go ahead and do that so this video is way too long but a lot of it had to be said so I hope this was informative if you have any questions please let me know I can talk about this okay so until next time everybody bye bye